Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to talk to you guys about what has been going on in my life for the past two and a half years. When you look at me, you don't see someone who has been housebound for about two years now. You don't see someone who can't drive her car, someone who can't work, someone who can't go to school, and someone who cannot go out and socialize with their friends. I have a condition called chronic fatigue syndrome and it is also known as myalgic encephalomyelitis. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Um, this condition sounds very far-fetched in a lot of ways, and I know a lot of people think that, and the name of it is even more far-fetched and ridiculous, but what I want people to know is that this condition is so much more than just being tired. It comes with numerous symptoms, which I'll get into later, and it has affected my life on every single level, so I guess I'll just get right into it. So when I was little, it seemed like I was always getting sick. I had ear infections constantly, always had colds, flus, you name it. As I got older, it, it got a little bit better, but when I was 14 years old, starting high school, things slowly started going downhill. I had started to become vegetarian, and when I was vegetarian, I did not eat properly whatsoever. My diet consisted of tons of carbs and sweets and just super, super unbalanced meals. I also went through a lot of stress at home. This impacted my life in so many ways. And you know, when you're a 14 year old girl starting out high school, like everything is going to be stressful and intense and just crazy. So going through this specific stressor in my life really, really played an effect on me. You know, as time went on in high school, like, yeah, I went out with friends and always had fun and, you know, for the most part, I was functioning just fine. Um, but I did notice, like, when I was in school, I would fall asleep in my classes all the time. Like, I would fall into, like, a super, super deep sleep. I also started getting a lot more colds again. A lot of colds, a lot of flus, um, a lot of hormonal problems. I was always sick and I never really felt good. but. This drastically got worse when I turned 18. So when I turned 18, I had started my first part-time job and I started going to school, college, and it just seemed like I was declining when it comes to my health. I was getting sick even more often than before, which is already a lot. It seemed like almost like every six weeks I had a cold or a flu or some kind of an allergy problem or sinus infection. It was just always something. You know, I just I just pushed through it and I still went to work when I was sick sometimes and I I would still try to go to class and everything. I wouldn't rest my body. I would still try to hang out with friends and everything, you know, that you're not supposed to do when you're sick. And on top of it all, you know, I was still eating this really bad diet and I was not taking care of my body. As time went on, things kept getting worse and worse. I had injured myself pretty severely um, at my job and it caused me to go on a two month medical leave. What happened was is that I injured my side, my muscle right here, and it caused a ton of pain and I'm still dealing with that pain today. Going on that medical leave made it so where I was sitting a lot and I wasn't able to function normally. And I believe this also contributed to more injury because my body was deconditioning on me. So eventually things started getting even more difficult and I had hurt my shoulders right here and it, it started to trigger these really crazy migraines. It was starting on my shoulder muscles right here and would radiate to the base of my head and up towards the front and it was awful <laughs> at the time my doctor had told me they were just tension headaches whatever that means and that she can give me muscle relaxants and it would be fine and it seemed like things just kept getting worse and worse I specifically remember being at work one day and having the most intense vertigo I've ever felt in my life it felt like the room was spinning everything was going blurry um, I felt like I was gonna pass out. It was just crazy. And I remember thinking like really nothing of it. Like I remember this happened, I was scared, but I just thought, okay, like it's just anxiety. Speaking of anxiety, I also suffer from generalized anxiety disorder and I have since I was 14 years old. 
and I believe this also played a big part in what is going on in my body today um, because when you're stressed and you're anxious your body automatically goes into fight or flight mode which causes your immune systems to just start acting up and getting crazy and you know stress is one of the biggest factors in health decline so having generalized anxiety disorder really really impacted my life um, you know, I would be out with my friends or at my boyfriend's house and by the end of the night I would just be leaving in a panic and my heart would be racing. I couldn't catch my breath and this was all over nothing too. Like there was no trigger, there was no reason for it and you know, if something little did happen in my life, I would just be terrified. For example, when I was going through my muscle problems and my migraines and the severe pain that I was going through. Um, every time that pain would get worse, I, in my mind, because of my anxiety disorder, I would think that I was dying when really I knew like it was just a muscle injury, you know, or it was just a migraine or tension headache or whatever. And after years of dealing with this anxiety, like I think just over time, it really, really affected my health. Um, I was really good at putting on a happy face when I was out and you know, not a lot of people knew that I went through this. It was hard because I wanted to do what my friends were doing. I wanted to be active and healthy and feel good and go out without feeling horrible. As time went on, things seemed to eventually fall into place. Things were starting to get better. I started to have more of a handle on my anxiety. Um, it seemed like my muscle pain was getting a little bit better. I had been going to chiropractic treatments and massage therapy, acupuncture, physical therapy. And when I was about 21 years old, I believe I had just turned 21, I was in a car accident. My car was totaled and I was slightly injured. Luckily I came out okay, I'm, I'm very blessed that I came out okay, um, but I did injure my chest area up here and my collarbones and, and stuff, you know, it was just, it was from that impact and hitting the car so hard. But. You know, after going to physical therapy again and having more treatments, eventually that got better and things just seemed to like slowly fall back into place. And I had also gotten a new job at a local bakery here in town and I loved my job there so, so much. It was a really happy time in my life because I had finally found a job that I loved. Now I had also started going back to school because there was a period of time where I took time off from school because Every time I go to class, I would completely zone out. I feel like every time the teacher would be teaching or lecturing, my brain would not absorb any of the information that was being taught. At the time, I thought maybe just school is just not for me, or maybe I'm just not smart enough, you know? I, I really, really thought these things. And so I went on a short break from college, and when things started to pick up when it comes to getting this new job and everything, I had gone back and I was finally passing my classes for the first time in so long and I was just so excited because I felt like I was finally on my way to getting better not only physically but mentally. So in January of 2014 I was at my boyfriend's house. We had just made like this vegetarian vegan pizza thing. I remember after eating the pizza, my hands started getting rashes on them and they started burning, like intensely burning. And we had put some like peppers on the pizza, so I thought maybe it was just from that, like I had no clue. But I felt okay, other than the rashes on my hands, like I felt okay. And I went home just like a regular normal night. At five o'clock in the morning, I woke up throwing up and I was so sick. So of course I thought it was just a regular flu, stomach bug, whatever, and I took a couple days off of work to rest and recuperate and move forward. So after a couple days I was feeling better and about a week later I was at work on my regular Saturday shift and I remember just feeling so sick. I remember my coworker telling me that I looked completely ghost white and I looked like I was going to pass out. So I got sent home from work and I just thought, okay, this is just like part of the stomach bug that I had last week. You know, this sometimes happens. It's all good. I'm just going to rest and I'll be fine. So the following day, my mom and I went to the urgent care. 
and we wanted just to make sure everything's okay. And the doctor I saw misdiagnosed me with a bladder infection. He had put me on antibiotics, really, really strong antibiotics, which I later found out that I'm allergic to, and it really wreaked havoc on my body. Um, at first, it seemed like I was getting a little bit better, but by that next weekend, I remember I was out with one of my best friends to go get food, and that night I came home just violently, violently ill. And so that night we decided to go to the ER because it had been two weeks and I wasn't getting any better. So we were there all night and they had taken some blood work and a urine sample. And sure enough, they just said, stomach virus, you'll be fine. Go home, rest, you'll be back at work in a few days. About two days later, I had gotten even worse. I was getting chills, severe, severe, crazy chills every single night. I couldn't eat anything. Um, I couldn't even sleep because my chills were so bad. I'd be up all night just shaking and it was just awful. And so we went back to the ER and this time around they ran every single test you can think of. And sure enough, again, everything came back perfectly fine. And this is really scary because I just wanted to know what was going on in my body. So they told me again that it was just a systemic virus. These things take time to get through. Just rest, stay hydrated. Here's some anti-nausea pills. You'll be fine. For the next three weeks, the chills, the nausea, everything, was it was just happening every single night. And it was bad. It was just really, really bad. Eventually, it started to get a little bit better but I couldn't tolerate any food. I would try to eat something healthy like a salad. When I would try to eat something, I would just get so sick. It came to a point where I could only tolerate things like broth or crackers and I was losing weight rapidly and you can just see it in my skin tone. I was completely pale, very gaunt and just completely sick. When this was happening, I honestly, like when I try to think about it now, I feel like being scared is an understatement. It was just so crazy to think that there was something going on in my body and after all these tests and doctors, they couldn't figure out what it was. So after all of that, we decided to seek help from a nutritionist. We knew that something was wrong with my gut, my stomach, and it needed to be taken care of. And besides just not being able to tolerate food, I also constantly felt fluish. I felt that achiness that you get when you have a cold and it just felt so awful and it was just constant, just 24 seven. So when we saw the nutritionist, she ran some tests on me and had diagnosed me with candida overgrowth. And to treat candida overgrowth, I was put on a very, very strict diet of just basically green vegetables and protein. Now, mind you, I had been vegetarian for almost nine years at this point. My list of foods that I could eat on the candida diet were very limited. It was basically all green vegetables and then a list of meat protein and like tofu. <laughs> so I really had to make a decision that was very difficult to make because I was so desperate to get my body back in balance and to get well, I decided to start eating meat again. So I was on this diet for about four months. I was also on a number of supplements. The supplements included probiotics, herbs, prebiotics, anything to get my gut healthy again. So after being on this diet for four months and the supplements and everything else, my digestive issues improved immensely. I was finally able to tolerate foods again and get the nutrients that I needed. The only problem was I was still very fatigued and I still felt, felt very flu-like but I was able to function still. I was able to go out with friends once in a while. I was still able to drive. I just pushed through it and acted like I was fine. Now, during this time, we were still frantically searching for answers because we knew that something was off in my body. So the nutritionist that I was seeing ran some more tests and she had diagnosed me with Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune thyroid disorder. It was strange to me because my blood work always showed that my thyroid my thyroid was in range. I was always borderline hypothyroid, but it was in range. It wasn't anything too concerning. And so when I found out that I had antibodies coming against my, my thyroid, we thought, okay, 
this makes sense. But the only problem was is that the antibody level was not very high. It was, it was just elevated slightly. But not knowing enough about thyroid disease and, you know, you're doing everything you can to trust the doctors and, and to just take their advice and listen to what they're saying. We, we thought, okay, we have answers now. I have Hashimoto's disease. This is, this is what makes sense. But in my mind, like in the back of my mind, I just, there was just something off about it. I don't even know if that makes sense, but. <laughs> so we saw an endocrinologist here in town and she reviewed all my blood work. And she had told me, yes, you have Hashimoto's disease. And so we thought, okay, like this is confirmation from another doctor. But she also decided to run some more tests on me. She tested me for lupus, autoimmune diseases. Um, she tested for inflammation in the body, just all kinds of things. And everything came back fine, but it was crazy because this time around, my antibody count went back down to normal. So then this doctor had literally told me to my face that I'm not sick. This is all in my head. I need to get on antidepressants and go live my life. And I was in tears crying because I wanted more than anything to live my life. I wanted to go back to work. I wanted to go to school and be with my friends and actually feel good while I'm out. And for whatever reason, she just completely dismissed me and gave up on me. So we went back to my nutritionist and told her what had happened. Then she referred us to a naturopath doctor in Arizona. This naturopath doctor, he, and I, I'm not gonna say names, he is very well known in the naturopath community. And we had decided to make an appointment with him because we had heard so many good things. So I had to wait about three months for the appointment and we bought plane tickets and my family went and got on the plane and went out to Arizona for a couple of days. When I was on this trip, for some reason, I started having really severe panic attacks. Now I had had anxiety for years at this point. So I knew what a panic attack felt like. I knew what to do during a panic attack. These panic attacks were not normal. It was like my body went into complete overdrive times 10. I can't even describe it. And the first night we were there, I I couldn't even sleep. I was just so worked up. And it is crazy because I was even anxious about the appointment. I was excited about the appointment. Yet my nervous system just felt like it was just going to explode or something. I don't know. <laughs> but it was just crazy. So the next morning we went to the appointment and and we thought at the time that it went really well. He had diagnosed me with a condition called Hashitoxicosis. Whether this is a real condition or not, I don't know, but at the time I thought it was because this is what the doctor had told us. He told us that Hashitoxicosis is the very beginnings of hypothyroidism or the very beginnings of Hashimoto's disease. And his protocol entailed that I take a supplement to suppress my thyroid completely so the antibodies aren't wavering back and forth. And then from there, I would take thyroid medication to get my thyroid in balance again. This sounded like the answer we had been looking for. This doctor seemed so nice and just like he knew what he was talking about and we finally had answers. So we go back to where we were staying and we were gonna stay one more night and catch the plane home the next day. Once again, when we went to bed, I could not sleep. I don't know why, I was, I was shaking, I was nervous, I felt like I couldn't breathe and once again I was having another panic attack and I had no clue why. I had just found out some good news because we found answers, we had this protocol, things were going to start working out, getting better, but for whatever reason I was just in panic mode. So I went a full 48 hours with no sleep and the next morning we got on the plane and I feel like I don't ever remember anything from that day because I was so zoned out from lack of sleep. But when we got home, I was excited because I knew we had answers, or at least I thought we had answers, and I thought that things were going to start getting better. So I started this new protocol, and within a couple weeks, I started getting very ill. And the doctor never said that I was going to feel worse before I feel better. So we ended up having a lot of Skype appointments with him, a lot of phone calls, and just a lot of discussion back and forth on what to do. 
because I was feeling so sick. It got to a point where those crazy panic attacks or whatever you would call them were happening every single day for hours on end. I couldn't breathe. I felt my, my nervous system felt completely shot and I'm telling you it wasn't it wasn't a normal panic. It wasn't normal anxiety. So for a short period of time I went on anti-anxiety medication just to help me through it and it seemed like it it helped. And one morning I woke up and I put my feet on the ground from the bed and the entire room was spinning in circles. I thought maybe it was just from the anti-anxiety medication, so I didn't really worry too much about it, but this went on for a couple days. There's one day that I remember specifically, I had woken up to go to an appointment at my nutritionist's office and I couldn't even hold my body up to take a shower, so I had to wash my hair in the bathtub. I remember not being able to put on my makeup, not being able to brush my hair, blow dry it, anything, and my mom had to drive me. And when we got there, I couldn't stay for more than five minutes because I felt so sick and out of my own body. I came and explained to you what it felt like. It, it, it was just a complete outer body experience. When we got home, my mom had to help me inside. I had to hold on to her when I was walking because I couldn't even balance my own body. And from that day forward, my life has been flipped completely upside down. At this point, we were pretty scared because, and when I say we, I mean me and my family, because I was getting so sick and just, I looked so pale and I was down to 114 pounds and it was just so awful and so bad. And this doctor from Arizona, he just kept giving us the runaround and it got to a point where I believe he has, because he's really really well known in the naturopath community and he has so many clients thousands and thousands of clients and patients and it just seemed like he was so distracted with so many other patients he didn't have time for my case or my case was too difficult for him and he didn't want to admit that so by this point he had ordered probably eight panels of blood work and mind you these were all like pretty much the same things that he kept ordering so we decided to pull the plug on him. So after doing some really, really hard research and going to the urgent care multiple times, we were told that this was not a thyroid condition. You were misdiagnosed. Something is going on neurologically. Something is not right and you should probably go see a, neuro a, neuro a neurologist. Neurologist? Neurologist. <laughs> I can never say that word. So we had my primary doctor refer me to a neurologist and after looking through my case, they denied it. So I was torn because I just wanted answers and I was so scared and so sick. I couldn't walk. I had to hold on to my parents every time I'd walk. Um, I couldn't breathe. My breathing became very, very shallow and it just seemed like I couldn't catch a satisfying breath of air. I would try to walk from the living room to the bathroom and just be completely out of breath by the time I got there. It had felt like I'd ran a mile. So I was, I was scared for my life. Honestly, I was scared for my life. And at this point, it was so bad that um, I didn't want to live anymore. I, I really didn't. And I don't mean to sound morbid or anything. And I, I never contemplated suicide, but at the same time, I just knew that like, I didn't want to be on this earth anymore if I was going to live like this. So finally, after a lot of prayer and a lot of research and recommendation from people, we had found an endocrinologist here in town. And he was very highly recommended by a lot of people and a lot of doctors and um, was affiliated with University San Francisco medical team. We saw this doctor and he had me get off all of the supplements, everything I was on, so we can just have a clean slate of blood work with nothing in my system to alter it. So after all the blood tests and everything, and after hearing my story and everything that I've gone through, he asked me, did you feel this bad before you had that stomach virus? And I said, well, I always felt bad, but I was functioning. I, was, I wasn't 
I wasn't sick like this. It, you know, I was living my life perfectly fine. I was in pain, but I and I wasn't feeling good, but I was living my life. And after all the testing and discussion and everything, he had diagnosed me with post-viral fatigue syndrome, better known as chronic fatigue syndrome. So he had put me on some antidepressants to treat the symptoms because antidepressants are often used to treat chronic fatigue syndrome or to help with some of the symptoms and I was I was finding this out I was mortified because I knew that with CFS there was no cure I knew that there was no treatment no proper treatment and there was very very little recognition of this disease and I remember going home just in tears, crying, bawling, crying, but part of me knew it was gonna be okay. So after finding this out, like, I kind of just knew that all I could do was give the antidepressants a shot and hope for the best. During this time, um, I went through a lot of bad days and a lot of fear and a lot of emotional breakdowns and just, you know, I can't even describe how scared I was because my body was failing me and I had no clue why. I knew that, you know, obviously there's a reason for all of this, but I just, I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. I didn't want to go through it, you know, and everything I saw on online and and on Instagram with people's posts, everything, you know, people with CFS, they end up in wheelchairs and they, they, they never live life normally again and they're never gonna get better. Like these are all the things that are out there. And I just wanna tell you right now, if you're suffering with any chronic condition, don't ever give up hope. Don't believe that negativity, okay? Like I cannot tell you how many days I drove myself crazy because I thought I was gonna end up in a wheelchair and I thought that, that this was gonna be my life forever. With that being said, um, in December of 2014, I surrendered everything I had to God and, um, some good things started happening. I, I went through a very short remission period from December till about the end of January. So it was about two months and those two months of my life were just something beyond that I can explain. I was feeling very, very humbled and close in my in my spiritual life and my spiritual walk and um you know I won't go into too much detail but I just knew that that God allowed that short amount of time for me to really reflect on who I was and who I was becoming and and what going through this had had done to my character and to who I was after January of 2015 um it seemed like I started going downhill again and I got off the antidepressants and hoped to trying another one that seemed that would maybe help me even more. And I started seeing a psychiatrist and he confirmed the diagnosis of chronic fatigue syndrome. And um, he also diagnosed me with secondary depression and secondary anxiety to chronic fatigue syndrome or to chronic illness. So then he tried to put me on stimulants and um, of course it didn't work. It just made me even more sick. <laughs> And one night when I was up with insomnia, really, really bad insomnia, um, I was scrolling through Instagram. I had come across the CFS, the CFS Health Instagram page. This page um, talked about a program called the CFS Health Program that was run by a man named Toby. And it was based in Australia, in Melbourne, Australia, and their program was dedicated to helping chronic fatigue patients recover. So I did my research, I got in contact with Toby, and right away, I signed up. It has been the best decision I've ever made in my entire life. Without this program, I would not be where I'm at now. Um, basically, the program entails a lot of holistic treatment of your body. No supplements, no special diets, nothing. It's all about treating the body as a whole. So that includes proper sleep, nutrition, meditation, cognitive behavior therapy, graded exercise therapy, just, just all of it in one. And after reading some testimonials and watching some testimonial videos, I was just blown away how some people with CFS 
had recovered completely. And some of these people were sick for five, six, seven years. And I was just blown away by that because everything I had learned about CFS and everything I had heard was that you can't recover from this, you can't get better. And I kind of want to just like slap myself in the face for believing that. And not to mention Toby, the founder, and a lot of the people that he works with, his colleagues, they also had chronic fatigue syndrome for a lot of years. And seeing that just brought so much hope into my life. That being said, um, I signed up for the program, got working on my recovery, and I am happy to say that I am about 45% recovered now. I know that might not seem like a lot, but going from not being able to walk to the restroom and not being able to wash my hair in the shower to being able to walk almost 10 minutes now a day, like an intentional walk besides like regular like walking to the kitchen or the restroom or whatever um, and being able to actually wash my hair more than once a week in the shower not in a bathtub um, it's pretty amazing and I, I just hope to continue to see my symptoms improve and you know I have a lot of them and I'm just gonna really quickly list all the symptoms I have dealt with and just tell you guys real quick the ones that I, I have now and that have gone away. Um, hopefully I can remember all of them. So in no particular order, of course there's fatigue, tiredness, exhaustion, there's brain fog, cognitive impairment, blurred vision, slurred speech, digestive issues, headaches, migraines, sore throat, swollen lymph nodes, low grade fever, difficulty walking, difficulty standing, loss of balance, disorientation, vertigo, hair loss, cold hands and feet, body temperature issues, food intolerances, muscle pain, joint pain, numb feet, tingling sensations, heart palpitations, secondary anxiety, secondary depression, heat intolerance, cold intolerance. I honestly, I can go on and on. Those are all the symptoms that I have dealt with. Um, I'm probably even missing a few, but I'm happy to say that more than half of those symptoms are gone now, thanks to the program. Um, my biggest symptoms that I still deal with on a daily basis are the extreme fatigue. I go to bed at night, sleep for eight to nine hours, and I wake up feeling like I haven't slept in three days. Um, the brain fog is still very severe. It's gotten better, but it's still very severe. Um, at one point, I wasn't able to write at all. I wasn't able to text on my phone. Um, couldn't do any of my artwork, couldn't, couldn't even speak properly. Um, you know, that also falls in with the cognitive impairment and those go hand in hand. Um, so that's still a pretty tough symptom, but it has gotten better. This time last year, I wouldn't have been able to make a video like this. Also, all my food intolerances have gone away. I'm now able to eat whatever I want and I'm so happy because I forgot to mention too, I also had food intolerances um, to random things like black pepper or chicken or certain vegetables and fruits. My stomach would just be in severe agonizing pain from these intolerances and luckily my gut has healed 100%. Um, on and off I've been gluten free, but right now I'm gluten free because I feel like it has helped my symptoms about 5% or so. And I know that's not much, but for someone who's suffering on a daily basis, like 5% is a lot. <laughs> um, I am now able to go on drives with my mom and my boyfriend. Um, I can't drive myself yet, but I can go on drives. For the longest time, I couldn't even go to my own boyfriend's house and just sit and watch a movie. Like he had always had to come here until recently. About two months ago, I started going to his house and now I'm able to go there a couple times a week without feeling worse. I have been able to walk into a couple of stores for a very, very brief time while holding on to my mom or my boyfriend or a shopping cart. Um, I'm still extremely disoriented when I walk and it's kind of like my brain won't catch up with my body, if that makes sense. I have to walk very slow and I can spend no more than 10 minutes inside of the, the store as long as I'm holding on to someone <laughs> and as long as I hadn't done anything earlier on that day. Um, 
I'm now able to cook meals for myself when before I had to have my family cook for me because I was too weak to hold my body up. I'm now holding my body up okay. I, I, if I slouch a little, it's because I, my muscles get very tired, um, but it's better. Um, I'm now able to shower more than once a week. I, I have to sit down in the bathtub while I'm showering, while the shower is going, but I'm able to stand, I'm able to stand on and off. So that's a huge win. And with my program and, and structure that I have, which is something I'm going to talk about in another video. Um, I'll, you know, I really want to show you guys my daily, um, uh, recovery routine, I guess you can call it. But in brief, I'm able to do some gentle yoga and stretching. I'm able to do my intentional walk for the day. And yeah, it, you know, I still have my hard days and there are still days where I'm so flared up that I can't get out of bed. And there are days where if I push myself too much, I am better at him for a couple days. And, you know, I've gone through so many crashes from that, um, from pushing myself. I haven't had a crash since March and I've still had my bad days. I have my days where I can't get out of bed, can't really do much, but it's better. And I have my days still where I'm crying and just wanting this to be over with. And I know what's gonna happen soon. And I know that I have great things ahead of me. I firmly believe that. And all I can say is that please don't ever give up hope. Please know that you can get through whatever you are going through. Do not submit to your illness. Do not let that illness define you, whatever it is. Even if it is something that, that you know for sure can never be cured or or something that you know you're gonna have to live with for the rest of your life, do not let that illness define you because you are worth so much more than that. And, you know, I know with social media out there and just people in your life giving you negativity and doubting you, telling you that, you know, your illness is just in your head and you look too well to be sick, you look too good to be sick and, and you must be faking this and you're wasting your life away. Those are the kind of things that you have to come against and know that they are not true. They are 100% not true and you will get through this. I will put some links down below in the description box um, for the CFS Health Recovery Program and their contact info. I will also link some really good websites for more information on chronic fatigue syndrome and all I can say is keep going. Thank you guys so much for bearing with me and for watching this video. I know it was so long and I'm so sorry, but I just had to get this out there. I really appreciate you guys watching and um, taking the time out of your day to listen to me talk and rant and ramble. <laughs> um, I promise not all my videos are going to be this long and crazy, but I hope you guys enjoyed and if you have any questions, Feel free to leave them in the comment box below. If you guys like me and like my channel, please subscribe and please give this video a thumbs up. I can't wait to share my journey with you guys. I promise you it's not going to be all about CFS. This, this channel is for positivity and hope and things that make us happy. And um, I can't wait for the days where I'm vlogging and I'm out traveling the world and doing well. And that's something I'm really looking forward to. So I'm going to go now. I love you guys and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.